Thank God for just being here on today. Thank God for, again, as we said earlier, with the many blessings that he's already been doing in our lives. Thank God for the testimony service. Thank God for every individual that's in this place on today. Um, don't want to belong the time we're, we're going to go into um, to Psalms, the, the we're going to Psalms 85 and 6. Dear the Father, Lord, we come just as long as we know how, God, this morning, oh God. Lord, we need you in this place on today, oh God. Lord, stir among your people right now, oh God. Lord, lift up our bow down heads right now, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your presence because we realize, God, that without you we can do nothing, oh God. Lord, as we get ready to move into this next part of your service, we ask that you would increase as we decrease, oh God. Lord, that you would have your way in this place on today, oh God. Lord, that you would strengthen every heart and mind that's in this place on today, oh God. Bind Satan on every hand. Cast them out right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we be careful to give you the praise and all the glory and all that belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. And amen. Amen. All right. Psalms 85 and 6. Um, it says, it reads this, it says, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Um, and, and, and I want to take a subject on today, the Lord revive us again. Because truly, in this day and time, we need a true revival from God. Amen. We need, a, we, need, we need God just to come in and revive our hearts once again. We need God to just come in and to touch our minds and to the point where we're, we're keeping our, our eyesight solely depending upon the Lord. Um, we, we, we live in a time where the world looks like things are, are slacking off. People are slacking off. People are are not praying as, as they, they once prayed, and they're not living the way they, they once lived. We, when we come in even to the house of God, sometimes it seems like we, we, it's a struggle to, to give, give the songs of Zion's like it was before. Yeah. But but we we want to we know that it ain't God that's failing on us, it's we, we fell on God. Yeah. And what we want to do, we want to be sure that we draw closer to God, to the point where He will revive us again, to give us that form of passion that we once had, that form of uh, uh, go as we once had before. Because usually, you know, when we're passionate about something, and I, and I watch people over and over again, when they're passionate about something, they really have put everything they have into it. Amen. Amen. They they're passionate. When, when men are passionate about ball game, when when the game is getting good, they're up on the edge of the seat. They're they're yelling. They're they're enthused with it. They're getting all the excitement into it. But 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 when when they're passionate about it, they, they give it give their all. But if we can do all that in a natural sense. Why is it that when it's time for service, we can't give our all in the service? We have seen, we have preached, we have prayed, we have, we have given it all, but we ought to learn to give up, be passionate about the Lord just the same way as we were when we were in the ball game. Amen. Amen. So while uh, we're, we're, we're looking at this, and, 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 and I'm looking at this passage of scripture, the, the first verse said, Lord, thou hast been faithful aboard to thy land. And I want you to know that God, even though we're going through, God has been favorable to us. Even though we're, we've been in the land now, God is being gracious unto us. Thou hast brought back us out of captivity as old Jacob. As in that first verse said, he is the one that brought us out of captivity. And then the second verse said, thou hast forgiven the iniquities of thine people. And thou hast covered all their sins to lie. The Lord has already done a lot for us. He's already covered us from where we are falling short. He's already strengthened us where we have come up weak in. He's already done this great thing for us. So, so therefore, we ought to be the people that he's looking for in the last few days. Because he does so much for us, we ought to be able to say something on his behalf. One scripture said, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Uh-huh. We ought to be saved because he has already have redeemed us. Amen. He's already have brought us through. He's already done covered us to the point to where he made a way for us. So we ought to be willing to say something for the Lord. 
Amen. So it says in the third verse, Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy neighbor. Turn us, O oh God. We, we need to turn. Amen. We need to go back to, to the Father. We need to be turned. Because he says that, that he says in that fourth verse, turn us, O oh God, of our salvation. And cause our anger towards us to cease. We don't want to be in a situation where God's anger is killed against us. Amen. I, I know he's a loving God. But the Bible tells us the same God is a loving God that will bless us, that will keep us, can also turn and be an angry God towards us. Amen. 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 And being angry towards us, he, he speaks a word and we will go through suffering and pain, not for righteousness sake, but for, for but not being what he has told us to do and not obeying to what he has told us to do in the beginning. Uh -huh. but, but the people of God in, in, in his, in his psalmist is, is the people that got on God's bad side. They ain't been what they supposed to be. They ain't living the way they was, was told to do. And, and you know the story. God caused them to go into captivity because they would not hear the word of the Lord. He says, turn us. Now, now, now God is, is, is the brought them back and now, now the people now should be rejoicing and they were asking for the Lord to revive them again. Revive them again. I mean, something that was in them, they, they lost that passion. So, so in other words, to revive them, they, they, he needs to stir them up again. Amen. Amen. The, 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 the Psalmist 85 and, and, and force goes on to tell us that, that for us to turn to the Lord, turn to the God of our salvation. And Psalms 80 and, and more says, Give ear, O shepherds of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth, and before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength, and come and save us. In other words, we, the people are looking for God to come in and stir them up and, and, and revive them over again. Amen. We ought to want to be want God to revive us. Amen. But we know that, that every once in a while, even though we we haven't done much bad things, we haven't been been running all over the place. But we ought to want God to keep us revived in His Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We Amen. want to keep Him up, stirring our anointing up to the point where people will see God in us. Amen. So, so, so that he sent them in the eighth division of Saul to the Lord to stir up thy strength, not not our strength, his strength. And then come and save us. And, and then in the second verse, it says, Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine. We want God's face to shine upon us. Amen. I, I know we don't we don't have a we ain't got a church full in morning, but we all want God. Face and his and his light to shine upon us. Amen. The one scripture says that 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 his, his light should shine on us so much that men should see his good work in us. Amen. So we want God to let his light shine down on us. Not only to let his light shine down on us, but to stir us up again to the point to where our light is shining. Amen. It says they come and save us. Then the second verse goes on to say that we shall be saved. Mm -hmm. If you go to turn over the third verse, he says, Do ye, and then the James the fourth and five said, Do you think the scriptures, what the scripture says, is in vain? The spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? No. No, no, we, we don't lust to envy. Amen. Amen. We don't lust to go after the things of this world. Amen. But it gives, the Bible goes on to say, it, he gives more grace. Wherefore he said, God resist the proud, but give his grace unto the humble. We want to keep ourselves humble before the Lord so he can revive us. Amen. Amen. We want to keep ourselves in a situation where God can move in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. We all be praying for God to revive us again. Amen. Amen. It goes on to say in, in the sixth verse of James, the fourth chapter, it goes on to say, submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves, and, and, and when we we're submitting, we're, we're taking off what we want to do and taking on what God is saying. 
And then we're, we're, we're submitting ourselves. We're not trying to pull our agenda in, in, in the situation. But we're saying, God, whatever your will is, that you, your will, be accomplished in our life. In other words, we're taking down our ways. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're putting on his ways. Amen. We're taking away what, what we want to do because our flesh lust is after the things of this world. And as we're taking away the things and turning away and submitting this body over to him, we're telling him all the time, come on and live in us. Amen. 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 Now you got to say amen. But, amen. But that's what he said. He, we, we're submitting our ways to him. Mm -hmm. So that way he can have free course in our lives. And, and, and the Bible goes on to say, it says, draw not unto the, to God. When we're going to do these things and going to, going to submit and, 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 and being subject to them, as we draw to him, the Bible says that he will draw unto us. Amen. Amen. How can you have a revival when, when you go in one way and God is going the other way? Mm -hmm. Amen. How can you be led by the Spirit when what God is trying to get you to do, you won't bring yourself in line with what he's telling you to do? Amen. How can we be revived when the place that God has set for us that we don't even want to go to that and be put to the point to where he can't pour something into us? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know how it is with somebody being stubborn and they won't listen? Amen. Mm -hmm. you, you, you try to teach them something and they won't listen and, and at that point you can't pour nothing into them because they won't, won't hear. Sometimes it's between a husband and wife. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's between parents and children. Uh -huh. Amen. When you're trying to teach that child something about life, that child just would not hear. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. And they go on and do what they want to do and, and say what they want to say, and they're not put to the point to where they've been submissive to what God or, for, or to what the parent is really saying. Then when they go out there, they find themselves to the point where now they're in trouble, then they wish they had. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm preaching yeah. already. Because he's what happened is God be trying to revive us and we want the revival, but God be trying to tell us something, but we won't hear. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And we go on and we move on. And then when circumstances of life hits us, then we're to the point then to where now we wish we had to listen. Now we wish we had a, had time to, to spend with the Lord. Now we wish we had had time to, to hear what his voice was trying to tell us because we want to be able to go back where we go. Amen. 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 I, I, I was sitting there at the funeral yesterday and I was listening and, 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 and seeing how things were going, everything that was said about, 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 about the ancient and everything and, and, and we were realizing that life is just too short. Amen. To miss out on what God is really truly trying to do for his people. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Right. You can't wait till you get spread, spread across before the altar. And God has pulled your chain to try to get things right. Amen. You have to have things ready and available before that time comes. Amen. 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 Because see, time is too short to miss the purpose that God has placed you here on this earth to live. Amen. 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 The people of God, they weren't here. And this ain't the fifth division of some. They, they didn't hear them to the point that well, now they got in trouble. And now that they got in trouble, now, now God is having mercy on them and bringing them back. The ones that he, you know, first of all, he killed the ones that wouldn't listen out. If, if you go back and study, he killed the ones that, that was disobedient. He killed them out. Amen. Amen. He destroyed them because they wouldn't listen. It wasn't to the ones that gave up and did what God had told them to do that they was able to live and to survive the situation. If we're not careful, God be talking to us and we will not hear what he said, God will kill us out. And I, and I, this is not referring back to, to a gracious, but this is referring to us as a people of God as a lesson. When we won't hear what God is saying, then God will cause some problems to fall upon us. Amen. Amen. Let me go ahead and read on. Six verses. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us mercy, O Lord, and grant us salvation. Now, you hear the eighth verse now that said, I will hear 
what the Lord will speak. That's the problem that got us in trouble in the first place. We weren't hearing what God was saying. Amen. Amen. They said, now I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his what? His saints. Amen. Amen. But let them not turn again to folly. Now, you follow it after folly, you follow it after the old crazy stuff, then, then, then you, you're going to find yourself in a situation to the point where then you wish you had heard from God. Amen. Like verse says, truly, his salvation is not them that fear him, that the glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. So in other words, you, you, you got to have all of the of the of, of these characteristics that, that rose together in order to be in a situation where God can revive you again. Amen. You have to be able to come humbly before the Lord so He can touch you again. Amen. Amen. Oh, wait, wait. Second Timothy. First, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not there, therefore ashamed of the testimonies of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with that holy calling. See, God, he didn't call us to live in the kind of way. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. He didn't call us to, to do anything that, that come across our mind to do. He called us to live according to his standard. That's the reason why we have to be submissive. That's the reason why we have to be subject. That's the reason why we have to, to hear what he is trying to tell us. Amen. Amen. Is this something I think I said if, uh, a, little back, a little ways back in a couple of sermons back? It's one thing to hear. To pray, to get down and pray and ask God to bless me here, bless me now. But we won't stay there long enough to hear what he's trying to tell us. Amen. We, we can pray a lot of things. We want God to do a lot of things for us. But it's not until we're going to hear what God is trying to tell us to do. And when we're going to be an obedient to that, then God will move on our behalf. Amen. Amen. But in order for us to be revived again, God is telling us that we have to come back humbly. And I believe in 2022, we need a revival going on. Amen. Amen. The devil has done a lot to try to cut us out. He has done a lot to try to kill us out. But we as the people Amen. of God, we need to go back to God to the point of where God will revive us. Amen. 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 It goes on to say uh, in, 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 in Psalms, um, uh, Isaiah 57, 15, it says, For thus said the Lord, the high and lofty one, that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. He said, I dwell in the high and holy place. We're talking about the Lord. Now, he's dwelling in the high and holy place, and with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isaiah 57 15 tells us that God wants to revive us. But he gives us stimulations that we must meet in order to be revived. Amen. Amen. The only way you're going to revive us, we have to have that contract spirit and be humble in the spirit. And to revive us, we got to, we got to show forth that we want to be low in spirit to the point where we will listen to what God is trying to tell us. And I know, I know that this morning this might not be a shout message, but we have to be to the point to where God can revive us. Because if you go back to 85 and 6, it says that wilt thou revive us, that thou people may rejoice in thee. We ought to have a praise in our hearts. Mm. Amen. Amen. We ought to have a praise. No matter when we come together. 
We ought to have something that, that we ought to be ready to offer up God out of a pure heart. We ought to have something within us, even though my praise don't sound like your praise. Amen. I should be rejoicing in my very best that God has for me. If I can't preach the way you preach, I should be able to give my very best. If I can't testify to the point to where you might be able to test, I testify, I still supposed to be giving my best. Because God can revive us to the point to where he can take us to the point from the dead thing. We don't want to be dead. Now, let me, let me that. We don't want to be all that I was doing and that we're doing that it still end up being dead works. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We should be living a life and a prayer life to the point that where God is reviving us to the point to where whatever we do, it brings forth life. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It should bring forth life. If you if you're going to do anything in the Lord, it should be able to be a help to someone to bring forth life to that individual. You shouldn't be doing anything that, that, that to try to please them. It should be able to the point to bring forth life to someone that cannot deal with the things that they're dealing with in life. Amen? Amen. The preacher in Ezekiel, God had promised them an army. Ezekiel then even though God had promised an army, it didn't look like Israel, uh, Israel was going to ever have that army. And God used the preacher to go out and lift him up in the spirit to go out to the valley of dry bones. Amen. Looked like something that, that was already dead and gone, that was dried up and didn't have no life in it. God used the preacher then to speak life into that situation. What you say, preacher, sometimes we might be in a drought situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. But God will use our voice to be able to speak light to a dead situation. What are we saying to our, our dead situation? What are we saying to those areas that we're, we're lacking in? What are we saying to, to life when it seems like life is not giving us the fruit that we're looking for? What are we doing to that marriage? Are we speaking life now? Are we speaking life in our kids? Mm -hmm. or what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that in that same chapter of 37, of chapter Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel to speak to the people, mm -hmm. to the bones. Yeah. Speak life to the bones. First he asked them, can the bones live? He said, Lord, not knows if they can live or not. Lord already know. Oh yeah. But what he trying to do, he's trying to convince us to the point that we, we get to understand it. Because if you read that 37th chapter on down, the people of Israel that he was talking about that was going to be the great nation, those people was already thinking they was going to be all dry. They said their testimony was we all dried up to push us forward. We have nothing else to drive us. We're all dried up. And, it's, and the worst thing of all is trying to convince someone that already have their mind made up that everything has already failed. We already looked up, we already done, 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 just, just messed up all the way around. It's to convince that individual that there's still life even after the dead situation. God has it planned to the point even when we come up short that he still got life prepared for us. Uh -huh. Lord, we need a revival. Amen. We need to be revived again. We need those dead situations to be called back to life. Amen. We need to see those, the songs of Zion to be re, people happily re, and rejoicingly singing those songs of, of Zion. But then the song goes on and says, Oh, Zion, what is the matter now? Why we don't sing the way we used to sing? Why we don't pray the way we used to pray? Because sometimes we need a revival again. We need yeah. somebody, to, we need the Lord to pump life back into our situation. Amen. 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 We, we come, we want to be rejoicing. We should rejoice. Amen. We should leave here happy. Amen. Anytime we come to church and we leave church sad, that's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm not saying that this, that's what we are, but well, when we leave the church the same way, we, we all have got to yeah, be some fire behind it. Amen. I know we're supposed to bring it in together on our own, but the Bible goes on to say when we come in, we need to stir up the gifts that's in us. Amen. Amen. Stir up those things that's in us. We can do better. We all have some shortcomings. We all have some areas that we can come up in. But we got to learn to allow God to stir up those areas. And in first Timothy, the second Timothy, more than the first chapter, as I read earlier, he said that same gift that was in your mother, 
and in your grandmother. That's what he was telling them to stir it up. Should be in you. You got to stir it up to the point where we are able to do what God has called us to do. I hope I've said something to help us because we, we need to be to the point where the Lord can revive us again. Amen. 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 And, and I'm not trying to pr pronounce no doom, death thing or like we're dead. We just don't have no, no power. But we ought to be able to, to, to have the, the joy of the Lord in our lives to the point the way it just bubbling up in us. Mm -hmm. Amen. To the point to where we, we have been redeemed from the Lord, we ought to be have something to say about it. Mm -hmm. I can see if we ain't been redeemed, but God has brought us a long way. Amen. 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 He has brought us to the point to where now we're able to, even in a drought situation where everything else is closed off, that he's able to do for us things that other people are not able to be recipients of, but God has chose us to be receiving it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we ought to be giving God some praise. And then we ought to be giving him the glory. Because the story that's in our life, if it really been told, he ought to be able to get the glory out of our lives. Amen. Because the story ain't been good always. Amen. 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 But we can literally say today is better than it was on yesterday. Amen. 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 Today he's given us more grace to the point to where we can make it better than it was on yesterday. Because every time we turn around, he's always making a way for who? For us. So what I'm saying is, church, we ought to be revived over and over again. Stir us up again, Lord, yeah. to the point to where now we're on fire. His ministry is supposed to be a flame of fire. Amen. Amen. So it means I'm supposed to be a flame of fire for you. Amen. I'm supposed to put you in remembrance of what the Word tells us to do. And when I do that, then the Bible tells us then we are what? Good ministers. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we do that, then the Bible says that we are what we are calling for in the last day. We, we got to do that. Not only for the ministers, but the people of God. Everybody's a leader in their own section. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Where have God has given us to the point of where we, he has trusted us to do that we have not done. Amen. If it is, if there's anything that God has done, then we ought to be revived to the point of where we're ready to do it with the same passion it was when he first gave it to us. Amen. Amen. Don't lose your passion for the Lord. Don't lose your passion, your drive for what God is telling you to do. And then the more you do it, the more you press on, the more God will show you who he really is. 